Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I want to talk about Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the closed beta. So this is going to become an open beta over the weekend. Anyone with a PlayStation 4, whether it's a classic or a pro, should be able to get on and play. And then next week, PC players will be able to get into the uh, closed and open beta as well. And they're going to start testing out cross-platform play. So PC players will be able to play with PlayStation players. I want to keep this video pretty open format, pretty raw. Just give you my initial impressions of playing. I want to play it a lot more, which is one, a really good sign. And two, will give me a better insight to more of the nuanced meta and things that I really like and don't like about the game and whatnot. But... Uh, overall, I'm happy. I came away from the gameplay experience excited about the future. The one thing that I really wanted to try most in the new Call of Duty game were the large format game modes. Unfortunately, those are not yet playable in the beta. It's not really clear what modes are going to be available uh, to play yet. They're rotating out the modes each day and they haven't really announced what's coming. I think it would be awesome if Ground War was available. I, they did sort of allude to it, I think, in the past, so I think there's a good chance it will become available. And that, to me, is the most exciting part of the new COD game because we've never seen what COD can do with such a large format game mode on larger maps, uh, playing bigger like domination style games with five capture points, vehicles, all that kind of stuff. Looks really exciting, so I, I can't wait to try that out. In terms of the game modes that I was playing yesterday on Thursday, um, they're far more representative of classic COD stuff. However, the pacing and the mechanics and all that stuff are slower. They're different than what you would expect from some of the faster paced COD games that we've been getting recently. And I found myself really enjoying it. There's some cool mechanics in this game that I, I'm personally not used to seeing in a COD game, like the ability to open and close doors or bash through doors. Granted, we've had that in the Battlefield franchise for a while, but it's still cool to see it in Call of Duty. Uh, you can also mount your weapon on the edge of something. I wasn't actually doing that that much, so I don't have a lot of good examples of that. But you can mount your weapon on the edge of a, a, a door frame or a windowsill, kind of like a bipod, but you can do it with anything, and that'll stabilize your recoil and aim much more significantly. And it'll also put you right on the edge of something, so a lot of your body will be concealed behind it as cover. I actually think this is integrated pretty well. It'll be interesting to see um, if it gets a little too cheesy or if people find a way to exploit it in certain areas. Visibility in this game, granted I was playing on a standard PS4, not a PS4 Pro, though I did look online to see the differences. And there doesn't seem to be a huge difference in terms of graphical quality, but it might be a slight resolution reduction. Regardless, visibility at a lot of times was pretty tricky. There's a lot of dark areas of this game now since it's a new engine, better graphics, better lighting, um, and it was hard to see people. And that's one of the areas where I think, um, especially since they're doing cross-play with keyboard and mouse versus controllers, where controllers might have a little bit of an advantage. Because if you ADS into a window or a doorway that's dark where you can't see somebody, but you think somebody's there, your sticky aim will snap onto them and you can down them pretty quickly. If you're on keyboard or mouse, it's not going to snap onto them. And so you're guessing a bit more in that regard. So it'll be interesting to see if they maybe finesse some of the visual quality. Also, since I haven't played on PC yet, it's entirely possible that playing at higher resolution, higher frame rates, uh, tweaking with the graphic settings and whatnot will make the games visibility issues far less uh, of an issue, I guess, is what I'm saying. So um, that's something that I'm really excited to test out next week and see what this game looks like on PC and um, also test out that cross-platform play. I have a feeling that cross-play is really not going to be uh, as big of an advantage on PC. Uh, playing with keyboard and mouse on PlayStation Four here, which is what I'm doing. There's definitely a bunch of input delay on PlayStation 4. It's not bad, all things considered, but if you are if you really want to play keyboard and mouse, PC is probably going to be the way to do it. I'm actually really excited about the cross-play potential uh, because it means the PC player base will probably always have populated servers to play in. Um, and it seems like they're doing a pretty good job of it. I don't think that console players are going to be at a significant disadvantage. The sticky aim counts for a whole lot in this. And so you're going to have to be a top tier PC player to hold your own against a top tier console player. Like I've already seen it. Um, 
and we've seen examples of it already on some of the like tournaments and the the uh, streams that they did for the game already, where you had top tier pro console players going up against pretty good PC players, and you know the console players were dominating in some cases. So that's pretty cool. Now, so far within the beta, we've been able to play four maps with three game modes. There's TDM, Domination, and Headquarters. Headquarters is actually pretty fun. I like that one a bit. And the gameplay sizes vary from 6v6 to 10v10. I honestly thought the pacing was pretty similar, regardless of those uh, two different game sizes. They both seemed pretty fast paced. Um, and it honestly didn't feel like we needed more players at the time, but if they're implementing larger maps later with potentially much larger player counts, that will be really exciting to see and see what the pacing is like as well. Um, the gameplay and gun mechanics. So the gameplay is slow. It does feel like there's a bit of an advantage for playing a bit more passively, camping and whatnot. That's always been an element of Call of Duty to an extent. I think once people start to understand the meta a little bit better, camping will become potentially less powerful. People will understand the, the popular camp spots or they'll design kits that are really good at um, fast reaction times and stuff like that to out uh, maneuver campers and stuff. The part that makes it particularly tricky is the incredibly fast TTK of Call of Duty. So. If there's a camper and he's got a, he's got the first shot off, sometimes you're dead before you can react or do anything. And that's just part of COD. It happens in Battlefield too, but I feel like Battlefield sometimes maybe gives you a little bit more reaction time depending what kind of weapons and stuff people are using. So we'll have to see how this balances out in the long run. The fast, fast, fast TTK of Call of Duty does make me feel like there's less of a emphasis on things like headshots in this game. It's something that's a big part of, say, playing the Battlefield franchise. It's like, okay, once you start getting your meta down and your skills, you're gonna have to start integrating those headshots if you wanna start beating out those better players than you. It's gonna have to become a staple of your gameplay. I don't know if that is a staple of Call of Duty gameplay. It feels like just generally getting your sights on target and blowing somebody away is enough. Uh, because the TTK is so stinking fast. It could make a difference. Um, again, just my initial impression was like it might not really be that big of a part of it. So in terms of the the aiming and the gunplay mechanics and meta, the skill ceiling might not be quite as high as you would expect from other first person shooters. That being said, the guns are really cool. The animations are amazing. I think this game might have some of the best ADS animations and reload animations. It feels fluid, fleshed out, solid. There's nothing clunky in there with the animation system. And that's something that I've always appreciated about COD games, but this one in particular, things just seem to work out really nicely. I'm not feeling like I'm fighting animations. I'm not feeling like, oh, I could do this faster. Or I should be doing this faster. Animations sync up with the timing in game perfectly. I'm not feeling like, oh, I should be shooting the gun now. Why isn't it shooting? Okay, animation's finished, now I can shoot. There's nothing aggravating like that, which is, you know, the Battlefield franchise is full of that kind of stuff right now. And that's nice. The gunplay from that perspective feels extremely solid. The gun bench and customizing your weapon is flipping awesome. Like, it's really cool. The upgrades are not just straight upgrades also. So if you unlock a new gun, you're not going to be at a huge disadvantage versus somebody who's got that gun fully maxed out because all the upgrades and all the things you add to the gun are side grades. Aside from, I think, the perks. I think the perks are straight upgrades like faster reload and stuff like that. But beyond that, uh, you just basically get the options later to further customize your gun. Do you want to control the recoil in exchange for ADS speed or something like that, you know? So it's all, it's all a trade-off and you can customize your gun and make it look really badass. Um, I haven't seen the camo stuff yet, but I assume that's coming. The modern weapon selection is top notch. I love the guns they've chosen so far. They all look really cool. There's a lot of modification in there where you can take your gun from just being a basic assault rifle to throwing drum mags on there and turning them more into like machine gun style weapons. You get some really cool customization options and it does seem like the weapon progression goes pretty far. So you'll be able to just keep playing again and unlocking more and more different cool attachments to really make it play out differently. And that's exciting. That's fun. I like that a lot. The optics and the uh, uh, both iron sights and red dot sights and all that stuff, they look phenomenal. 
There's like a flip up magnification site. I haven't unlocked that one yet, but I've seen players using it. It looks flipping cool. The developers have really done a phenomenal job with that, considering that you spend so much of your time aiming down sights in this game. Obviously you want it to look good, and I think these are some of the best optical renderings that I've, I've seen in any first person shooter so far. The art direction is also really good. I think it strikes a really good balance between realism and sort of fantastical, exciting, tactical operators moving around. People are wearing gear that they probably wouldn't be wearing and all that sort of stuff in real life, but it still looks believable enough for it to not take me out of the element, the scene, the setting that they're creating here. So that's really cool. There's obviously going to be a lot of cosmetic unlocks and customization uh, in this game, and it looks really cool so far. The maps are very nicely detailed. The engine upgrade has really uh, added to that with the lighting upgrade and all that stuff. The environments feel more believable, I would say, than previous COD titles. It's not quite on Battlefield's level, but I think the developers are striking a balance between visual clarity and realism, right? The further you go towards realism, the less visual clarity you're going to get, the more campy behavior you will get as a result. So I think the developers are striking a really nice balance between this. And like I said before, they might even need to pull back with some of the dark areas in the game being a little bit too hard to see. If somebody's camping in a dark window, you just might not see them at all. In terms of reading what some of the community is saying and reacting to, it does seem like the COD fan base uh, might be struck on some of the, the pacing of this game. People who are used to the faster paced games might not like it. As a Battlefield player, I absolutely love it. And I think if you're to make the gameplay any faster paced or um, speed it up a little bit more towards aggressive play style, it, it might not feel real enough. It might not sync up with the visual setting or the aesthetics of the game to the point where you're like, okay, well, here we are as modern tactical soldiers, but we're running around like maniacs. I mean, we already are running around like maniacs in the game. And if it was any faster, I think it would definitely conflict with the style of it. Um, I think the slower pacedness of it is fun. It can be more tactical. I don't think it necessarily detracts from some of the skill ceiling there since the sort of typical cod running around like a chicken with your head cut off gameplay something that doesn't really appeal to me that much um, you still get a little bit of that you can definitely build a kit that plays more in that vein if you want to but it seems like a game that might appeal more to the tactical side of players as well there's still kill streaks. there's still cruise missiles that come in from above which are kind of buggy right now they have some issues with them but you'll be running around and explode to them randomly the audio in the game, as far as gun sounds, is really nice, but in terms of positional and locational audio, I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, you know, and that's comparing this game to some of my favorite positional audio games out there, like Battlefield 3, even Battlefield 1 had pretty decent positional audio uh, for building combat and stuff. This, I feel like, is pretty quiet at times. Um, a little bit confusing at times. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to playing COD games lately, but ultimately the audio clarity uh, felt a little bit muddied for tracking targets and positional stuff. Um, I wasn't overly impressed with it, but the gun sounds are a lot better than previous COD games. Now, in the smaller format, smaller map, game modes, it still feels much more like a COD game than it does a Battlefield game. And that's purely because of map design and scale. Because with these smaller map designs, you have lanes. You have maps that are designed very specifically around lanes. You could draw out these maps on a piece of paper without any of the cosmetic stuff and they would look like a little bit of a, a puzzle or a maze that are supposed to be balanced out to play against each other. And that's good. That's great for tactical gameplay. You can balance things out. You can have uh, standard flanking rats and stuff. The, the downside to this is that with any game like Counter-Strike, Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty, uh, with these smaller format maps, you're going to be running the exact same lanes, the exact same positions over and over and over again. People are going to be hiding in the same spots. You're going to get used to it. You'll flashbang a certain room every single time because you're used to that strategy and that style around it. And that's totally fine. And it works out really well in COD. And if you like that, then you'll like it in this. As a Battlefield player, enjoying the larger format game modes and the larger maps, 
means that you're not going to be running those same lanes quite as frequently. People are going to be camping in different spots. You'll be fighting in different angles, different areas. There'll be tanks and vehicles in places that you weren't expecting to see them before, and you'll have to deal with new issues and threats all the time. The larger format creates a lot more new instances and new uh, situations that you just haven't run into before on a much more frequent basis and that's something that can be exciting for battlefield games i'm not going to say that their map design has been great in the latest titles by any means but just because of the scale of it you get more variety and more uh nuance to it uh because of that scale and call of duty modern warfare might have that i haven't played the larger format game modes yet hopefully they will open up in this beta and we can test it out. Uh, based on what I saw from some of the map design, it does look like there might be enough scale and variety in there to facilitate that style of gameplay. And I'm really excited about that. So um, just playing the smaller format game modes, I wasn't as like taken away or lost in this larger world of Call of Duty. It still felt like Call of Duty with improved mechanics that uh, appeal to me as a gamer and great visuals and great gun crafting and stuff like that. It feels like it's got a great solid foundation for implementing into a larger format game mode. Now I wanna play those larger format game modes. I'm excited, I'm enjoying the smaller format game modes, but I wouldn't be uh, playing Call of Duty if this is all that it offered. I'd probably play it for a little bit and be like, hey, that was fun, but now I'm gonna go back to some of the bigger open format stuff that I like about the Battlefield franchise. Show me the Ground War game mode COD, and that's what I'm pumped for. That's what'll keep me coming back to this game if it's done well. They've got the big open format stuff that just absolutely kicks ass and gives me cool variety and new experiences every time, which is what I like about the Battlefield games. Then, uh, then I'm sold. Then you got me, COD. But that's still what I'm waiting for. That's going to be the thing that hooks me and makes this game feel more like a war as opposed to a small squad operation. And as a Battlefield player, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that has that big format, that maybe slightly more open format, that immersive experience that I'm in a bigger battle and not just a small skirmish. That will be exciting if that's what Ground War is. I haven't played it yet. I've seen videos on it. It looks cool. I'm excited to try it out. Hopefully it opens up in this beta and we can get into it. But in the meantime, I'm actually more than happy to play the small format stuff and sort of work on gun unlocks and getting the nuances and meta down of the gameplay. Because it's actually at a pretty good spot right now for what I like as a gamer. I can't speak on the Call of Duty community. It's, it seems clear that there's some people that like it, some people that don't like it. But for me as a Battlefield veteran, I like the foundation that they've set, aside from claymores, claymores are a freaking disaster and so powerful. But beyond that, uh, the rest of it is very, very solid. Anyway, I'm going to be playing a bit more today, see what new game modes and formats are opened up and unlocked, added to the rotation. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll probably have another opinion piece video on this after I've sunk a bit more hours into it and after some of the new game modes have opened up as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.